This PowerPoint will serve as the narrated portion of the vocabulary for the rock cycle. What we're looking at when we see this page is the concept of minerals. Minerals are naturally occurring in organic solids that have a crystal structure and definite chemical composition. By inorganic, we mean non-living. And so as we can see this picture, we can see different crystalline structures that have been formed. So once again, minerals are naturally occurring in organic solids that have a crystal structure and definite chemical composition. The geosphere is the solid part of the Earth, so we're looking at the concept of the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Um, and the geosphere is broken up into these four distinct layers um, and is a concept behind the solid aspect of the Earth. So once again, the geosphere is the solid part of the Earth. Rocks are naturally occurring solid composed of minerals and sometimes other materials such as organic matter. In this case, we would think of organic matter being the remnants of fossils. And you can see in this picture, we can see the three different types of rock, igneous, metamorphic, and, sep and sedimentary. Um, and we can also see how these rocks are formed. Igneous are minerals that are fused together after being melted. Uh, metamorphic is minerals reforming and fusing together with heat and pressure. And sedimentary are, middle, are minerals that are cemented together with pressure over time. Once again, rocks are naturally occurring solids, composed of minerals and sometimes other materials, such as organic matter. The rock cycle is a series of processes that transport and continually change rocks in different forms. In this picture below, we can see the example by which rocks change, either through the process of melting, cooling, uh, heat, pressure, weathering, and erosion, or either being compacted and cemented together. Once again, the rock cycle is a series of processes that transport and continually change rocks into different forms. Uplift. Uplift is the process that moves large bodies of Earth's material to higher elevations. We'll learn more about this concept and we go through the tectonic plates. But in this example, we can see a formation of a mountain and that the plate is being lifted up. So once again, uplift is the process that moves large bodies of Earth's materials to higher elevations. Weathering. Weathering is the breakdown of rock that occurs as a result of rocks being exposed to the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. Uh, we can see this example right here, how rocks that have been submerged um, in water for significant amounts of time have actually had portions eroded away, hence why you can see these openings in the rock itself. So once again, weathering is the breakdown of rock that occurs as a result of the rock being exposed to the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. Erosion. Erosion occurs when sediments are carried by agents of erosion to a new location. If we think back to the water cycle, a good example of this would be... Um, when water hits and has runoff from a higher elevation, and this runoff eventually plateaus out and results in deposited layers. In this example, we can see is these different streaks are all different layers of when sediment were carried by agents of erosion to a new location, and then they were left there to rest. Igneous rock. Igneous rock is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Igneous rock can form either in or outside of the Earth's crust, and depending on how it forms, changes the crystalline structure. Um, in this example, we can see obsidian. Many of you may have uh, familiarity with this as a result of Minecraft. Um, but once again, igneous rock is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is a type of rock that is formed by the deposition of material at the Earth's surface and within bodies of water. So we can see how different layers are deposited upon each other. This happens as a result of weathering and erosion, where weathering breaks rocks apart. Erosion carries these pieces of rock to a different location. Eventually, they settle over time, building up pressure on top of each other. And this pressure over time pushes these, cons uh, these sediments together to form sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rock. Metamorphic is a type of rock which has been changed by extreme heat and pressure. We can see right here metamorphic rock is being impacted by both the pressure of the ocean, that's the concept of the pressure pushing down upon it due to its weight. We can also see how it's being impacted from heat from the magma below in the mantle. Metamorphic rock is a type of rock that has been changed by extreme heat and pressure. The mantle. The mantle is the middle and largest portion of the Earth's geosphere. This is also where we find magma. The mantle experiences thermal energy from the inner core. It also experiences less pressure than the inner and outer core because it has less weight sitting on top of it. The mantle is the middle and the largest portion of the Earth's geosphere. Magma. Magma is hot fluid or semi-fluid material below or within the Earth's crust from which lava and other igneous rocks are formed by cooling. 
we can see an example of a magma chamber. Uh, we can also see examples of magma found in the mantle beneath that chamber, and we can see how this magma starts to flow upstream and then eventually forms lava. A big concept to focus on based on this picture, though, is that magma is beneath the Earth's surface, while lava is what it's called once it is actually on the Earth's surface. So lava. Lava is hot, molten, or semi-fluid rock erupted from a volcano or a fissure in the Earth's surface. Lava is what magma is called when it is outside of the Earth's surface. So magma, once again, is found beneath the ground. Lava is what it's called when it's actually flowing over the Earth's surface itself, either after a volcanic eruption or as it's risen through a fissure in the ground. Compaction and cementation. Compaction is what results in sediment being cemented together and forms sedimentary rock. We can see in this example down below, individual mineral grains have been carried as a result of weathering and erosion. Over time, they build up upon each other. This results in increased pressure. And this increased pressure eventually fuses these together, the idea of cementation. Deposition. Deposition are deposits um, of a sediment that form layers over time. So what we can see right here is that sediments have been carried downstream as a result of erosion. They're taken from one place to another. This picture is a good example of it moving from a higher location to a lower location. And as a location flattens out, these mineral deposits build up on each other, eventually forming different layers over time that result in the formation of sedimentary rock.